Welcome back to the RPG Club, where we look at tips and tricks for running your campaigns and role-playing games. I'm your host, Tori Norman, and today we're going to be looking at another map build. This one is a recommendation coming from one of our viewers, Party, who asked us to do the Death House from Curse of Strahd. So for this one today, we are going to be using the Dungeon Craft series from 1985 Games. This is a 2D paper terrain series uh, that they put out. And this is their volume one set. I call this my core set. This is where most of our terrain is gonna be coming from. But since we are in Barovia, we are also going to be looking at Cursed Lands. Cursed Lands is their box specifically made for the Curse of Strahd campaign. So if you plan on doing any map making for Curse of Strahd, I would highly recommend picking up this box. It makes it so much easier. We're gonna be using a lot of terrain from here as well. So, um, Pretty much everything we're going to do today is going to come from one of those two boxes. There are a couple of small items that are coming from the castles and keeps. I'll point those out as we get there, but it's only a few small items. So if you haven't bought that box and you don't want to spend that extra $40, that's okay. You can survive this build without them. But if you have the box, it's going to add a few extra pieces that are going to make it really fun. So that said, let's dive in and take a look at this map. But before we do, I almost forgot, there is a spoiler alert here. We are going to be looking at the map for Death House, both the one from the book and my build. We'll be going over a lot of the different secret areas and hidden surprises. So if you are a player wanting to play Death House, you definitely want to skip this video so that you get the full effect of the discovery and wonder and excitement of playing through it with your party. If you are a DM though, stick around and let's take a look at the map. All right, so let's begin by looking at the map from the actual book, Curse of Strahd. This is the map for the Death House. And as you can see, it's a essentially five layer, four layer, I guess, house. Um, you've got the main floor, the two upper floors and the attic. And then you've got this small dungeon in the basement itself. Uh, so we're going to start by looking at the house portion of it, and then we'll move on to the dungeon. As you're looking at the house portion of it, uh, one of the cool things that 1985 Games has put together for a lot of their buildings are these building tiles. So the building tiles are really cool. They're two-sided. They've got the building on one side and the roof on the other. And so it makes it really easy to lay out um, cities or streets, uh, town squares, that sort of thing, really quickly. So for me... One of the hardest things to do in 3D is building a lot of buildings and painting them and having them ready for a townscape um, or a town scenario, an urban scene. Uh, that's just something that is taking me a lot longer to do. So to have something really quickly that I can turn around, these building tiles are awesome. And they, for Curse of Strahd specifically, they have built specific uh, building tiles for different iconic buildings in the campaign, like the Blue Water Inn or the Windmill or uh, the Vokter House, and also for the Death House. So this is their uh, building tile for the Death House. And right here at the top, we've got the... Um, We've got the roof, so I can set this out kind of in a, a street and just have several other buildings along the side. As the players come in, they just see kind of the building. And then once they go into the building, if I lift off the roof, we've got the first main floor here. And if you look at this carefully and you can compare this to the map in the book, you'll find that this is almost perfectly to scale with the map that's in the book. Um, we have the entryway is two by three, these rooms four by four, this is perfectly scaled. The only thing they've shrunk down to fit this onto their terrain tiles is the hallway. The hallway is supposed to be three, they made it two. So it's one tile smaller than what it's supposed to be. And honestly, I'm okay with that because a hallway there isn't a lot of action that typically happens in the hallway. A lot of the exploration and action tends to happen in the rooms. So I don't feel like we lost a whole lot there. And it's only one tile wide that we lost. So it does make a couple of the floors a little interesting. But overall, I think this is awesome. And the cool thing that I like about this terrain piece is not only is it a building, but it 
It's perfectly scaled and perfectly decorated to meet the, meet the descriptions in the campaign. So for example, as you come into the entryway, one of the key features is a shield with two paintings on each side, and that's been featured here. When you come into the den, you have the stuffed wolves. Those are featured here. So all of these pieces have been fit into uh, the terrain tiles so that they look the way they're supposed to, so that as you're reading, you can describe exactly what the room looks like and they see it visually. So that's really cool. If we move on to the next floor, we can move up to the second floor and we have the large ballroom. There's the piano and the harp. Both of them were featured there. Another thing that I like about this is not only did they add all of the elements and pieces into them, but they also scaled them down to match the size they are on the Death House map in the Curse of Strahd book. So, for example, in the dungeon tile set for the Dungeon Craft or Cursed Lands, you have tiles like, I just grabbed this bed, for example, just to compare sizes, a most of their tiles are exactly one foot squares. It makes it really nice when you're laying out terrains. So this is a one by two bed. And so if I put that down on top of this, you can see just comparatively how much bigger their terrain tile is to the actual pieces in the room. So if I were to add that bed and then the chest that's supposed to go at the footlocker at the end of it, and then I were to add the other bed and the other footlocker, that would take up the entire room. It would really start to feel claustrophobic really fast. So for me to build this with the terrain pieces and have it be to scale is nearly impossible. The only way that I could do this with the terrain pieces individually is to build the house much larger than it truly is, just to get that feeling of space. And so by using this tile, I instantly have all of the space exactly the way that I want it. And that's that's really nice. So they've scaled down all of their furniture to match the uh, the maps and give us that sense of space that we're looking for. Uh, if we were to go up another floor, all you do is flip this over. And now we're up on the third floor. And again, you've got the master bedroom, the bathroom, all of the different um, locations, as well as the balconies were included in there. And then you have the stairwell to the attic. And if you take your roof tile and flip that over, now you have the attic space as well. Now, the only beefs that I see with this particular setup. I mean, anytime you're, you're working with a pre-built map layout like this, you're going to have to hide some of the spaces for Fog of War, um, especially if you're working with youth who are really notoriously bad at um, metagaming, knowing what's going to happen before it actually does. So I try to, to hide as much as I can. The, the only way to really do that with this is to put down pieces of paper over the individual rooms until they're discovered. So what I typically do is I will cut out pieces of paper to match whatever the, the shape of the room is, and then I'll just stick it to the room using like a painter's tape. The blue painter's tape is really great because it doesn't leave a residue when you stick it on there. Um, so you can cover it with that. I've even covered them with sticky notes before if they're smaller rooms like these. But uh, you can cover those up. And then as the players discover them, you can uncover those. The only thing you have to be careful of is some of the rooms have uh, particular hiding places like this hidden chamber here. I really wish they would have just put a wall here and not a door because it really makes it obvious that this is most definitely a secret hiding place when you've got a door sitting behind a bookshelf. So as you cut out your paper for this, you just kind of have to overhang that paper so that it covers that wall and it doesn't give that sense that there's something hiding there. The other one that I really struggle with is uh, this back stairwell. So if you're familiar with Death House and how it's supposed to be run, there is a secret chamber in the attic or a secret door in the attic that leads to this stairwell and then you can take that all the way down every floor until you get down into the basement. That's how you access the basement. So this isn't accessible on any floor except the attic and then you go straight down. And they made it very accurate by including that on the map but what it means is now I have to hide that square on every floor and it's going to make players suspicious about why that that had to be hidden. 
If I were to have created this myself or in conjunction with 1985 games, I would have recommended leaving this square the same gray color as the walls to give that sense that nothing important is there until you get to the attic and then show the, the stairwell. Yes, that's not accurate, but I think it moves the story better and doesn't arise suspicion from my players as much as leaving the stairwell present does. So I didn't like that about it, but it is... You can deal with it. I just, it would have been nice if I didn't have to. So that is the upper floors. And honestly, like I said, I can't think of a better way to run Death House than to use this these pre-built maps. They're turnkey, they're accurate, and they're easy to use. So, and they're very, very visually appealing and descriptive. So that's how I do the top floors. Let's take a look at the basement. Okay. So, this is my basement for Curse of Strahd. Now, when I first looked at tackling the, the basement for Death House, one of the things that I was thinking of doing is, hey, why don't I just build it out, kind of like I did Tresendar Manor or the Amber Temple, room by room. And because it's such a small space, you could easily do that. But the interesting thing is, as I started building it, it's because this is such a small space that that doesn't really work. All of the hallways for Death House are meant to be very tight and claustrophobic. You really don't want to spread it out because it would be like this massive dungeon taking place under several different homes, not just this one. And I mean, comparatively, looking at the home compared to the dungeon, obviously the dungeon is way bigger than the house. But... Um, I wanted to give it that sense of claustrophobia and tight space. And in the Dungeon Craft series, all of the hallways are at least 10 feet wide. You don't have any 5 foot wide hallways. So it's really hard to build this area out. The only way you can do that is to expand this area, but when you do, then it messes up the map making on the other side, and so you end up having to modify and grow these rooms to match it as well. And so after a while, it just all kinds of get, gets blown out of proportion. So in the end, I decided the easiest way to do this was to just actually draw the map and only use the 1985's Dungeon Craft tiles to accent different things like furniture. So that's the way that I did it. If you've got a, a, a different way you, you've done it, I would love to see some recommendations, but this is how I set up the map. So um, I used a lot of little stair tiles. I used this one flipped upside down. Normally they look like this, just to give the sense that I was coming down from that stairwell. That's supposed to be a spiral stairwell, but it's also only supposed to be five by five and Dungeon Craft doesn't make 5x5 five five spiral staircases, so this is the best I could do, and it's close enough. Uh, so they come off those stairs. They've got this central hallway to explore. Uh, these two have open doors, so I just didn't bother putting doors in them. The way that I run things is once you've opened a door, I remove it. Um, I don't try and make it look open. So these are just removed automatically. As players go in and explore that, um, they'll find that those tombs are empty, create that kind of sense of mystery. They come down into this other chamber, and they've got these other um, crypt rooms, and those have sealed doors. Now, with the doors, in the way that they were built with 1985 games... Um, originally they were meant to be double doors because all of their hallways are 10 foot wide. So you have these double doors and you've got the metal on one side and the wood on the other. But because I'm hijacking them and using them for something totally different, I did take a few of my doors and I split them into single doors and just cut them in half up the tile. And honestly, it's kind of a pain in the butt because then when I'm doing double doors, I have to chase down my singles and like make them match nice and it's kind of annoying. But when I am doing builds like these, it's really handy. So I think I have three double door sets that I've cut down to singles. Um, the rest of them are still just double doors. Uh, but I did use the singles here and there's, you could get away with not using them here if you didn't want to cut open your doors. There is one place, though, that I really think a door is handy, and because I didn't want to spook my players by having the door there, I decided to um, put my doors everywhere that they appeared. So that was the way I did it. If you don't want to cut them, you could draw them or just do without. It's really not going to detract too much from the story. As we move further down, we do have this little dining area. There is a table that's supposed to have benches. The only table with benches is ginormous. You'll see it in the um, Amber Temple because it comes from the Castles and Keep set 
and it would take up half this map. So um, I didn't use that one. I just threw in a table because honestly the benches don't really add or detract. One thing that is missing from this room though is in this alcove there's supposed to be a Grick. I could not find a single character tile from the Dungeon Craft series that seemed to look like a Grick. So I just left it out. Um, if I were to run this, what I would do is go online and find a token for a Grick and just print it out in a one by one cube and set it down here. That's one of the beautiful things of using 2D tiles is if you can't find a specialty piece like that, you can go print one and it doesn't look out of place like it would if it were trying to hold space for a 3D environment. If I've got a bunch of 3D miniatures and 3D walls and then I lay down a 2D square, it's going to look weird. But it doesn't look weird here. And that's what I like about it. So I would go online and just find a token for a Grick, print it out, and put it there. Um, as we come into this space, there are um, a bunch of ghouls that pop out as uh, from the hallways here as they get trapped. So I totally forgot to lay those out, but those are out here. So we'll add those in. And when characters uh, come by there and trigger that trap, they bring out all of those ghouls, and then they have to fight those. So they've got those in the hallway, and the dungeon crafts from uh, Cursed Lands have these really cool, like, creepy-looking ghouls that have the tongue hanging out, kind of like they do in the Monster Manual. So I like using those. And they come in two colors. They come in green or this, like, nasty purple with bloody hands, or pink, I guess. But um, anyway, those are those. As you move into this little temple area over... Oh, I need to move my map. Sorry. There we go. There's the ghouls. <clears throat> and then when you move from the ghouls down into this hallway, there is this kind of temple-like chamber. In the description, there the walls are covered in skeletons. If I were to place skeleton tiles down here, it would just fill up a bunch of the space, and I didn't want it to feel like that because they're not in the space. They're just hanging on the walls. So I just describe them. I don't put them in. Uh, there is a statue in the back, and the statue is supposed to be of Strahd von Zarovich. They don't have... They have some really cool Strahd statues in the Cursed Lands. This is an example of one um, that just look awesome. But this thing is huge. The statue is only supposed to be a 5 foot by 5 foot square. So... It did mention in the write-up for this room that the statue is cloaked and hooded. And so I took one of these, like, priest-like ones. I think this may have come from a Kickstarter bonus that was a cemetery set. I don't know as this one came from Curse Lands. So if this isn't in your box, you can substitute it for really any statue, because there isn't a statue out there that's going to fit the description. It's supposed to be Strahd with a wolf next to him. I just threw out that statue and described it. So get a statue that's close to it and describe it. You'll be fine. Now, this room over here on the far end of the room, there is a door. And it's closed. And that's extremely important because when characters go to open that door, it turns into a door mimic. Now, there aren't any door mimics in the Dungeon Craft series. There are a lot of different types of mimics. I've seen even a couch mimic and the classic chess mimic, things like that. But in the Castle and Keep set, there is this mirror. And if you flip the mirror over, it is a mirror mimic. And although that's not a door, it is a vertical, thin object that kind of resembles a door. And so I thought, hey, you know, if I don't have a door mimic, that's pretty dang close. So this is one of those areas where the Castles and Keep set comes in handy. It gives it a little extra flavor. If you have the set, I would recommend pulling out the mirror mimic and dropping him there to give an icon for the door mimic where they can fight. If you don't have that, just go print off a mimic icon off the internet and put it there. I wouldn't go out and spend 40 bucks just to get a mirror mimic. It's just not worth the extra cost for me. I would go get it anyway because it's really handy with a lot of our other builds like Amber Temple. Um, I really think that doing some of those larger builds, especially if you want to try and use Dungeon Craft for uh, Castle Ravenloft, you're going to want Castles and Keeps. It has a lot of the the pieces that are going to be featured uh, in that setup. But um, for this build, it's not really that necessary. The other thing that came from the Castles and Keeps is the bed 
in the bed chamber at the bottom. I did use the double bed. They didn't have double beds in the main set. And honestly, I used a double bed there. You could use a single. I think the map actually has a single. I just like the look of the double bed, so I decided to put it there. There, um, There's a lot of other furniture in this room, but this is another one of those scenarios where the terrain pieces are so big, it just doesn't logically fit in the room. And when that happens, you kind of have to modify things. So I got rid of a lot of the furniture and just pared it down to the most important ones, which is what can you loot? If there's something there that's lootable, I want to leave it in there. If there's not, it's just an empty closet or something like that, I'm going to pull it out. So there was a couple of different things. There was a foot locker at the end of the bed. I put a chest there to represent that. And then everything else I just threw in this box. And I did that. There are a couple of guests. These are actually the owners of the house, if you know the story of Death House. And they are hiding in here. I didn't draw their alcoves because I didn't want the players to know they were there. And so I just put the the pieces down when they break out. Um, otherwise, I don't let the characters know that those exist. So that's kind of that part of it. The other thing that I modified quite heavily was this bed area and this kind of living area. So there is a small well in the middle of the bed chambers. Uh, and I just used this little well tile to represent that well. And I did center it just because it looked better aesthetically. You could put it on a tile if you really wanted to, but I just didn't. Um, in the bed chambers, I shrunk them a little bit because trying to get all of the beds is really, really hard um, and because of just how big they are. So I did a bed and a chest in every room so that they knew it was a bed chamber and they could go loot the chest. Um, in the final one, I think I still have an extra bed, but I couldn't find it. So I think there's enough beds in the core set that you can actually do that extra bed. I just couldn't find my my last bed. So I ended up just turning it into a storage chamber because at the end of the day, no one cares about the bed. What they really care about is what can I loot. And the chest had some stuff in it. I think that one had the sword and that's why I chose that one because that seemed like something that wouldn't necessarily be in a bedroom versus all of the other trinkets that you can find. So uh, that's that room. This room had some individual cut off bed chambers as well but the bed chambers were only two by one or ten by five and once you put the bed in there that's it you're out of room so I decided not to put the extra walls in I felt like it just closed it off too much and made it feel too claustrophobic with the furniture I'm using so I left it completely open and I cut out some of the beds because they really weren't necessary and they clogged up a lot of the space and I was running out of beds um, I want to try and keep it as open as I can so uh, I just threw in two beds there just to kind of make it feel lived in and left it at that. I also made sure to use all of the stair tiles because anytime we have change in terrain, uh, heights, I love that as a, a environmental feature. Uh, players can use that to their advantage, going up or downstairs, hiding behind stairs to peek over, um, kind of give them some advantage there. And I let, I let players try and play to that a bit. So I did make sure to include all of the stairs in there as well. And then if you come down these back stairs, that would move you into the lower level of the dungeon, which is over here. Slide this back over. So this is our lower chambers. And the players would come down into this room over here. And this is your reliquary. And it's just full of a bunch of supposedly magical trinkets that are actually just junk. But the players don't know that. And I would love to have them spend a little bit of time looting around in there. And so I made sure to draw each of the little alcoves to really emphasize um, what's there and what they can go explore. There is the prison chambers over here. Not a lot goes on in there. I didn't really put anything in there. I didn't see anything really tremendously of value. Um, so I just kind of left that blank, but allowed them to explore it. And then you move into the main chamber. The main chamber um, has water throughout with a central um, pedestal and then a raised walkway around. So I used the stairs to indicate the raised walkway. And you could just draw it if you didn't want to mess with the stairs, but the stairs look so pretty and really add that effect of helping players understand a raise in terrain versus a lowering in terrain. You know where the high point is and the low point is. And so it's really easy to see kind of how the stairs operate. And I feel like it emphasizes the raised platform a little better. So I used them. The, pil the um, podium in the middle or the raised platform, I guess, in the middle um, is supposed to be four by four. 
not three by three, but this is the largest pillar that I could find in the Dungeon Craft set. So I decided to use that one. And I think this may also have come from Castle and Keep. But again, if you don't have the Castle and Keep set, you can honestly just draw this. I just thought it looked cool and really emphasized and made it stand out from the water. And so I decided to uh, utilize that large pillar. But again, if you don't have it in your set, that's fine. You can just draw it and you'll still survive. Um, the key feature to this is the chanting priests and the golem, the shambling mound that's hiding in the refuse. Now, I didn't put any of the chanting priests on this because the chanting priests really aren't a threat. They don't attack. You can't really attack them. They're not even on the same level as you. They're above you. And so I didn't feel like it added anything by adding them there. It just cluttered space. So that's all theater of the mind. But the shambling mound um, comes out of this refuse or garbage pile in this back corner. And the way that I tell the story of Death House is um, you've discovered the bones of Rosenthorn. You've discovered the gas that were the parents, but no one ever discovers, discovers baby Walter. And that's because baby Walter is the monster that's been created from the refuse. Part of that refuse is his body. And this is the, the abomination that was baby Walter. And so, um, or anyway, so what I did is for that, instead of using a classic shambling mound piece that would have come from like the kind of the forest or nature, I used the flesh golem coming out of Cursed Lands. And they do have two sides to it. So there's a really fleshy colored one. And I use this one when we're in the abbey. And then if you flip it over, you got kind of this greenish one. And that's perfect for this kind of garbage pile flesh monster that I've created. So... Um, that's what I have coming out of the refuse pile, and that's what the players have to fight in order to complete uh, Death House. So that's a look at my dungeon and how I've decided to build it. All right, so that was the Death House from Curse of Strahd, one of my favorite maps from that uh, campaign, and one of the first encounters that your party will find if you choose to do that optional first through third level encounter. Remember that this map came as a recommendation from one of our viewers. So if you are in the middle of a campaign and would like to see how your maps could be built using the Dungeon Craft Tile series, go ahead and leave a comment in this video and I would be happy to tackle that challenge. Also make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can be aware of all of our upcoming videos as they come out. Thank you again for watching, and until next time, happy gaming.